And uh, how many know that words are powerful? Amen? How many know that something someone said to you either made, made you or broke you, right? You, you can either be made or broken by what somebody said to you. Somebody said you're, you're, maybe as a child, they said you're beautiful, you're pretty. You believe your whole life you're beautiful, you're pretty, even if maybe, <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, or the other way around, right? Somebody says something to you and, you know, you just recorded those words in your mind and you made them yours. And so throughout life, we've been receiving, we've been receiving messages, we've been receiving words that have been imparted into our spirit, into our mind, into our heart, and they've made us who we are today. And the problem with that is, the, it's good if you've had good people around you imparting good things into your life. It's good if you've had good people saying the, the right things into your mind and your heart over your life. But if you haven't, then the, the problem may be that uh, you, you're dealing with some issues this morning or you've been dealing with issues excuse me, because of things that people have said to you. Now, words are powerful. And uh, so to, this morning, we're going to begin a series called Speak Life. And uh, in the next few weeks, we're going to see how important it is for us to speak the right things, for us to speak the life of God into our circumstances, into our kids, into our spouses, into even our own life, and to speak life, not death. Many of us will say things without thinking about what we said, but in the things that we're saying, we're either speaking life into something or we're speaking death into something. And so it's important for us to understand that. And so let's go into uh, the scripture this morning, and we're going to use uh, a scripture that is in Psalm verse 19 and verse 14. Psalm 19 and verse 14. And uh, here we find the words of David, and uh, it's, it's a prayer to God, and it's a prayer that David makes to God. And in Psalm 19, 14, it says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. In your sight, O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. So David says, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, God. So God is saying to us this morning that whatever comes out of our mouth, whatever comes out of our heart, needs to be acceptable before him. That is a good thing. That is the thing that will please God if the right thing comes out of our mouth. And when you do that and when you begin to say the right things, when you begin to say the things that God wants you to say, then things will begin to change in your life and in your environments. Now, maybe you've been surrounded by people that are always said negative things, but this is the moment and this is the time when things need to change. We need to change that. We need to begin to do the opposite of that. If we've heard negative things, if we've been told negative things, now we begin to, we need to begin to say the right things. Why? Number one, because words are an expression of a person's character. Words are an expression of a person's character. Whatever comes out of your mouth, the Bible says it's really what's in your heart. Out of the abundance, out of your heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of what's inside of you, your mouth is going to, is going to speak things. So I, I want to encourage you this morning to begin to pay attention to what you're saying. To begin to listen to what you're saying. To begin to listen what's coming out of your mouth. I remember one day I had a vision and, um, of, a, of a person. And uh, when this person was speaking, he was, he was speaking negative things. And uh, as he was speaking, I saw a river. And I saw a river that was flowing water. And as the water was flowing... As, as he was saying negative things, I began to see rocks get uh, on the river, big rocks appear on the river. And as he kept saying more negative things, I kept seeing all these rocks begin to pile up on the river until it choked the river and the water couldn't flow anymore. And I realized that when people say things and when they speak negativity and they speak uh, death into things, they stop the flow of life in another person's life. They stop the flow of the river of God in someone else's life. When we say the negative things, when we criticize, when we gossip, when we speak badly and evil about other people, we can stop the, the blessing in someone's life. It's possible to make that person 
ineffective in their purpose because of the things that we say. Words are an expression of a person's character. Jesus made it clear that, that it's not the things that come in or in a, it, there was an instance where the disciples w had gone out to, to eat and uh, the religious people had this, this custom to wash their hands and, and to cleanse themselves before they went to eat. It wasn't so much a thing that they did because, you know, their hands were dirty. It was just more of a ritual, a religious thing that they, that they would do. And so it happened that, that the disciples didn't do that. And so they came to Jesus and they said, your disciples, they, they are, they're not cleansed because they didn't wash before going, uh, before doing this. And so Jesus used the opportunity to say to them that it's not necessarily whether, it's not the physical as much as the cleansing that is happening on the inside. It's, it's not so much, he wasn't saying that it wasn't important to wash your hands or to do something that in the physical, but he was saying that, that they had lost the meaning of the commandment. And the commandment was to come with a clean heart, not necessarily by the act of washing your hands, you were saying that you were clean now. So in Matthew 15, 11, he says these words. Jesus said, not what goes into the mouth defiles a man. The word defiles mean, un means unclean. So it's not an unclean thing that goes into a person that makes that person unclean, but it's what comes out of the mouth that defiles a man. It's what comes out of the person's mouth that makes that person unclean. Do you have a habit of cussing? Do you have a habit of cursing, of saying bad words? We've sort of toned down the you know, it's almost acceptable nowadays because we hear it everywhere. We watch TV shows and because they want to show how real life is, it's full of words and things that are said. It's just, you know, that are cursing. And, and it's, it's defilement. It's the unclean that's coming through that. So the Bible says it's not so much what comes in into the stomach, but it's what comes out of your heart. And so words are an expression of a person's character. Also, words are used by God as an expression, as a response to, to, to the Spirit's prompting in your life. The, the, the words that come out of your mouth, God will use those, mouth, those words as a response to the Holy Spirit. So, if really the Holy Spirit is working in my life, if God is doing something in my life, it needs to be reflected in the things I say. Let me say that again. If God is moving in my life, if God is working in your heart, God will use my words as a reflection of what God is doing in me. Because my words actually respond to the Spirit in my life. It's like an amen. See, you can say an amen to yourself. Because when you receive a revelation from God, or when you receive a word from God, or where, where something comes from God into your heart, and you agree with it, you say amen. And the best, the best thing is when you receive something from God as a revelation. And you can, all of a sudden, you might be in your car, you might be in the kitchen, you might be doing something, and then, you know, your spouse is there, and you say amen, and your spouse is like, what's wrong with you? And, and you're like, yeah, I just had a moment. Because God spoke to me, because God revealed something to me. See. Our words are a response to the Spirit. Our words can respond to what God is doing in our lives. Matthew 12, verse 37. Matthew 12 and verse 37 speaks a little bit about this. 12:37, And it says, For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. See, that word justify is a legal term. It, it, it means to acquit, to declare righteous, or to show to be righteous. See, you show your righteousness by the things that you say. You say, you, you, you reflect and you demonstrate your righteousness in Christ by the things that you say. See, if you've been accepted, forgiven by God, 
you're part of God's kingdom, there's a relationship with God, it will be reflected in the words that you said. You will justify yourself, not justifying in the sense of trying to prove yourself to be right, but justifying in the sense that it's going to prove who is already on the inside by the words that are coming out of my mouth. So it's almost like a requirement for us to make sure that we use our words in the right context. Because by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. See, you recognize that your words have power. You recognize that what you say makes a difference. You recognize that your words can either change a person's life for the best or for the worst. See, Jesus, in the context of this scripture here, because what happens was the religious people were saying that whatever miracles Jesus had done, they were of the devil. They were saying, what, the works that you do are of the devil. And so Jesus tells them, he says, you know what, you can, you don't have to believe me or what I say, or you, you know, it's not me, but if you say or speak a word against the Holy Spirit, that is a sin that cannot be forgiven. See, you can say anything that you want about me, but sooner or later, if you come to faith, you can receive that forgiveness of God. But if you speak against the Holy Spirit, that is a blasphemy. So he, in a sense, is protecting or guarding or speaking about the importance of the work of the Holy Spirit in a person's life. See, God may be working in somebody's heart. The Holy Spirit may be already doing something in someone's heart. And then, see, we become religious and judgmental and we tend to judge what's happening in another person. But we have to be careful because it might be the Holy Spirit that's already working in that person's life. See, that allows me or gives me a sense that I can't touch people. I have to be careful how I treat people. I have to be careful what I say about a person. I have to be very careful because the Holy Spirit may be already working in that person's life. So I have to believe that God is doing something in that person. I have to pray that God is moving in that person's life. I have to see the Holy Spirit already doing something in that person's life. Remember, when we were sinners, he died for us. When we were maybe out there doing our thing and living for ourselves and living without God, God was already working in us. Maybe we had not come to faith yet. We had not joined a church yet. We didn't call ourselves Christian yet, but God was already doing something in us. So Jesus warns those religious people, and he says, be careful what you speak against somebody. Be careful what you say, because it might be the work of the Holy Spirit. Christians have a habit of criticizing other Christians. Christians have a habit of criticizing other Christians. Especially when they see another Christian on TV. They see another Christian, they see a pastor on TV, they don't like the way he does his hair. Like the guy at the market, remember? <laughs> they don't like what he says. They don't like this or that about that person. And so we tend to criticize. We got to be careful. Because the Holy Spirit may be moving through that person. The Holy Spirit may be actually moving to, to do something in that person. See, Jesus said, by your words, you will be justified. By your words, you will be condemned. See, let's realize that God is already doing something. And you know, this morning, I want, I'm thankful that you're here in the house of God. Whether this is your first time, you just visited today, you just, somehow you found this church. Let me tell you something. We are so happy that you're here. Because that is a sign that God is moving in your heart. You might think, well, you know, I'm not really close to God or I'm not into God or 
I haven't been into God my whole life. But let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is working in your life. He's moving in your life. You may not agree with everything I'm saying today. You may agree with it, but you may not be willing to commit to it. But let me tell you, the Holy Spirit is working in your life. And that is a wonderful thing. And that's why we honor you this morning. That's why we welcome you this morning. Because we're so glad. Because that's what we're all about. This is a welcoming church. This is a church that believes in what the Holy Spirit does in people. And we celebrate that. So our words, we want to make sure that our words to you are words of, of, of health and life. We want to give you life. We want you to walk out of this place knowing that you've received life. We want you to walk out of this place knowing that God loves you, that God has a plan for your life, that God wants to do something over and above and beyond what you've ever thought. See, Words are an expression of a person's character. God uses our words as a response to the Spirit's prompting. And so this morning, that's why it's important for us to say amen to what God is saying. And then also to take into account everything that God says and, and, and at least make a confession and say, Lord, help me to say the right things, to speak your word, to speak life to people. Lord, help me. See, that's a response that we use with our confession. See, words also bring life or death. Proverbs 18.21. Proverbs 18.21. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. So whatever you love, if you love death, you will eat of death. If you love life, you will eat life. Because as your words are coming out of your mouth, you're, that's the fruit of it. So, so in a way, the words that I'm saying, I'm chewing at the same time and I'm digesting those words. Whatever words that I'm saying today, whatever words I speak during my daily life, those are the words that I chew and I digest and become a part of me. That's what the Bible says. And so if I confess death, guess what? I'm eating death. And I will digest death, and I will, it'll be the fruit of death. But if I, if I speak life, guess what? I'm chewing life. I'm eating life. I'm digesting life. Life becomes part of me, and I will eat of the fruit of life. That makes the, the choice pretty simple, doesn't it? What do we want to eat? What do we want to receive? See, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Matthew 4.4, 4, another verse that's very, very powerful when it comes to words, especially the words of God. See, words bring life. They can also bring death. When Jesus was tempted by Satan, the Bible says that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter, Satan, came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. And Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. He says, Life comes from the mouth of God. It is by the word of God that we are alive today. It is by the word of God that life continues for us. The reason we're still here, the reason life continues is because God said, let there be. He spoke life into this planet. He spoke life into you. He spoke life into our, he speaks life into our circumstances. See, that word, there's a two different Greek words for, for word, there's a word that is, it's called logos, which is, uh, uh, logos is like the message of God, which is Christ. He is the logos of God. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word is Jesus. He is the message. But see, there's also another word in the Greek for, for this, which is rema. And rema, in this reference, is, is, is not 
as the whole scripture, but to a portion with the believer will use in, in, a, in a time of need. A rhema word is a word that you use in a, in a moment, in a time of need. See, an arama word comes when you least expect it. A rhema word comes to you when you're going through difficult times. A rhema word comes to you when you might be, it may be in despair. You might be feeling like, you know, life doesn't matter. Things are not working your way. And then in a moment, a rhema word comes from God and it changes everything because it brings life. See, Jesus said that we're not, it's not just in the physical or it's not just the physical that we need. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So everything that God speaks is life. Everything that God speaks is life. So if God's speaking to you, he's speaking life into you. He's speaking life into your circumstances. He's speaking life into your future. I think that's a wonderful thing, that God will speak life into us. See, words bring life or death, and we ought to learn from God. If God is on my side, then God wants me to live. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and that you may have it abundantly, that you may have abundant life. That's the life that we need. See, the lesson this morning is that we need to focus our words and our thoughts on things that please and honor God. We need to focus our words and our thoughts on things that please and honor God. The next couple of weeks, we're going to look at examples in the Bible. We're going to look at how things that were said mark the destiny of entire people. The way people spoke about themselves, it determined their entire future. I like what Psalm 91 says, and this is really important because in Psalm 91, verse 2, let's read verse 1. Psalm 91, and when it comes to the power of words, we need to change our language, and we need to be, begin to speak about God, and, we, and, and it's important what you say about God. Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, he shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And listen to this, verse 2, I will say of the Lord. Let me ask you this morning, what are you saying about God? What are you saying about God? What is your confession of God? Imagine in a marriage relationship where your spouse is saying all the wrong things about you and all the bad things about you. How does that make you feel? Of course, that doesn't happen here, of course, right? When the other person speaks negative things, you know, he doesn't do this. You know, he's not a good leader. You know, he's not a good husband. He's not doing this. He's not doing that. Oh, wait. He, she gets her turn. Oh, oh, he or she. And, and how do we characterize God? How do my words characterize him? The psalmist here says, I will say of the Lord. I will say of the Lord. He is my refuge. And my fortress, my God in him, I will trust. When was the last time you said that? Maybe when you were in the hospital? Maybe when things were not going well? Maybe it's been a while since you said a good thing about God. Or maybe you tell your friends, you know, go to church and stuff. But I'm talking about a confession that comes from here. I will say of the Lord. Job was a man who went through tremendous difficulties. Lost his family, lost his material possessions, lost his health. And his friends came over, and they're trying to get him to confess 
some kind of sin that he'd committed because they said you couldn't be going through all of this if you hadn't committed some sin. And they pushed him. And there was a moment there that Job was kind of like, you know, you know, it's like there's people that get to the point that where they curse God. They curse God. Because they blame God for every circumstance. They blame God for the bad things that are happening in their lives. They blame God. One thing I've learned is that God does not want anything bad to happen to me. I've learned that. And I've, it is clear right here. I don't doubt it one bit. God does not want anything bad to happen to me. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that he is... The, 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 the giver of good gifts. In this Psalm 91, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Most High in the Hebrew is El Leon, the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Almighty is El Shaddai. He is all sufficient. He is the almighty. And so I know that my dad is the almighty God. I know that my God is the most high God. I know that my God is my refuge and my fortress. And I can trust him. And he'll take care of me. How many can confess that today? Let's take a moment right now. Come on, confess it this morning. Say, he is my God. Come on, let me hear it. He is my God. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him I will trust. Job, in the most difficult moment, he turned to his friends and he looked at them and he said, you know what? Even if he kills me, even if he kills me, I'm still going to wait on him. <laughs> Think about that. That's a deep conviction. Even if he kills me. Of course, God ain't going to do that. That was Job's way of expressing. See, the, the wonderful thing is that the Bible allows the characters of the Bible to express themselves, even that's even if they have the wrong theology. Because, you know, I don't think he believed that. But Job said, hey, even if he kills me, God wouldn't kill him. He says, I will trust in him and I will wait on him. See, God's plan was not to kill him. He could have killed him the first moment, took him out. But that wasn't his plan. So for us, the power of words are important. It's important that we speak life into our circumstances, that we speak life into our situations, that we speak, and, and it takes a little bit of training, let me tell you that. It takes a little bit of training. We need to train ourselves. So if you have a difficult time, if I have a difficult time speaking life, train yourself. See, this is saying, I will say of the Lord. In other words, pray the word in your life. Pray the word of God every day. Pray the word of God. Say, God, you are my secret place. You are the most high. Lord, I abide under the shadow of you, the almighty. See, that's what we confess. That's what we declare. We decree that. It's important that we do that. It's important that we use the power that we have in our words. You know, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart, you shall be saved. That's what it says. If you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart. You know that word Confess with your mouth. 
speaks of a, of a knife, of a sword, of a cutting. That's what he speaks of. See, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And the minute you confess your faith in God, at that moment that you confess, you're speaking life. I remember about 20-some years ago when I prayed that, and I did that prayer. And I said, God, I confess you as my Lord and as my Savior. God, I believe in my heart that you died for me. Man, everything changed. From that moment on. And what happens is you begin to cut all those things that have been bringing you down in your life. You begin to cut all those things from your past. And all the words and all the negative things that have been spoken over your life, you begin to cancel those things in your life. When you begin to confess your faith in God. See, because the enemy will not give up. The enemy will think that he has authority and rights over your life. The enemy will not listen to somebody else tell them, hey, listen, he's a Christian. He'll come after your things. He'll come after your family. He'll come after the church. But we need to be confessing life. We need to be declaring life. I thank God that in this place, we've confessed life in this place, in this building. That we've declared the goodness of God in this building. I, everywhere I walk in this place, I thank God and I say, thank you, Lord, for this building. Thank you, God. I speak life into this place. Yesterday, we had the fire department right out, the, right out here. One of our members who lives, she's actually living, living about 60 miles from here, 80 miles from here right now. And, uh, but she's, she has a house here in Burbank, so she still has some... Uh, uh, alerts and, you know, things that she gets on her email and her, her phone. And she got an alert on her phone. It said, uh, uh, fire department is responding to smoke at the Worship Walk Church. So she sent it to Sarah, and Sarah texts me, and she said, Pastor Joe, is everything okay? I was on my way here because uh, the, we had a music school in the morning, and uh, some of the parents of the kids that are in the music school, they saw smoke coming out of the second floor. The whole second floor was not smoke. So they called me and they said, Pastor Joe, there's smoke and it's thick and it smells really bad and it smells like it's burning. It's coming from the second floor. So I said, thank you. Call the fire department. So they, he called the fire department. Michael called the fire department. And they came by. So I got ready at my house and I came down. I drove down the boulevard. Oh, man, there was three trucks, and two on the front and one on the side. They had the big ladder all the way up in the building. I'm, I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. And I'm, the whole way down, I'm praying. I'm praying in tongues the whole way down. I'm praying in tongues. I'm, I'm praying in tongues. I'm interceding. I'm saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. So we showed up over here, and it turned out that, that the, the fan in one of the air conditioning units, it overheated. It overheated and it started pretty much, you know, smoking. That could have started a fire. But I thank the Lord that we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. Amen. He's all sufficient to take care of you. He's all sufficient to provide for you. But we need to confess life. Speak life. Speak life. You're going to see how God will begin to change your circumstances. Remember, you have power this morning. You have power. If I knew you had power, like I know, I would begin to use it. I would begin to use it. Whatever isn't working in your life, Whatever may seem to be dying in your life, if, if it needs to be resurrected, you need to speak to it. Just like when Jesus showed up at his friend's house, his friend Lazarus, and when he shows up at the house, his sister said, you're too late. You're too late. But let me tell you something. God is never late. There may be things in your life that you think, you know, they're done. There's no hope. There's nothing we can do. You need to begin to speak into those things. 
You need to speak life into those things. So Jesus shows up, and he speaks to Lazarus. And he says, Lazarus, come out. And the Bible says Lazarus rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. What needs to be raised in your life? What do we need to speak to this morning? Speak life into. 